Uh, last week I spoke with Michael. Michael's not his real name. I used that name to protect him. I spoke to him just after he withdrew cash from a machine located in a retail shop in one of my local uh, shopping centres. The cash dispenser is not an ATM. Rather, it is a machine which spits out cash loans. The process did not require Michael to indicate that he plan what he plans to do with the cash or demonstrate a capacity to repay the loan. It did, though, require him to hand over his bank account details so the lender could access his account to secure repayments and any interest or late payment, late payment penalties. Worse, the interest rate he'll pay can be anything up to 30 per cent. Penalties, of course, can be punitive. It was obvious to me that Michael did not fully understand what he had committed himself to in accepting this short-term loan. It was also obvious that he did not enjoy the benefits of a sound education. Michael is on a disability pension. I don't know why he's on a disability pension, but I know that every circumstance is different. If Michael takes $100 from the machine, he'll eventually pay at least $130. That's what will be taken out of his account. I asked him what sort of a money he's drawn out in the past. He said, oh, 300 I said, what would you repay? He said, oh, 400 and something was the repayment on his $300 short-term loan. So, Mr Deputy Speaker, Michael may have needed the money for many reasons. I didn't ask him. But before jumping to conclusions, I thought of Mary, which is also not the real name of the constituent, who desperately turned to a similar process when her refrigerator broke down. Mary has children, and her family can't live without a fridge. So Mary entered into a contract with a local retailer that provided her with that new fridge. The fridge retails for $498. Her repayment plan will result in her paying uh, three times that uh, by the end of the loan period. And that's if she pays on time every time. Again, no one assessed Mary's capacity to repay the loan or fully explained to her the consequences uh, of her action. In recent years, the growth in what have become known as payday loans has been scary. Basically, firms providing these loans are exploiting vulnerable and often desperate people. Yes, interest rates must reflect the level of risk for the lender but lending to people without regard to their circumstances and their capacity to repay is irresponsible. And the penalties for late payments are often bordering on criminal. In 2009, the then Federal Government, the then Labor Government, introduced reforms which implemented a national regime for the regulation of consumer credit uh, for the first time. In 2012, further enhancements were in introduced, including additional protections regarding small amount credit contracts and consumer leases. So we have a framework for addressing this serious problem, but time has demonstrated that more needs to be done. Our governments can't and shouldn't make lending uh, illegal, but there are some things we can do to catch those treading a fine line between the lawful and the unlawful. And there are alternative microloans for people in trouble, Mr Deputy Speaker. It's not as if this is their only choice. It's just too easy. I asked Michael whether there's any, often other people in uh, accessing cash from the machine in my local retail shop. He said, yeah, right. And he said, I came down one day and they were lined up, out, queued up outside the shop. The charitable organisations that run these other micro uh, loan options uh, do so responsibly, apply much lower interest rates and, of course, have the welfare of the borrower in mind. So there is no argument that these are circumstances that must be available because people don't have other choices. The government now must act urgently. The loan sharks are circling our most vulnerable people uh, in our community. Now, we've had the review of the small, uh, small amount credit contract laws. Uh, Mr Speaker, it was subject to some debate in question time today. If there's ever a case for a bipartisan approach, uh, this is it. Uh, we need to act. We need to act very quickly. The government has been too slow. I don't want to criticise them tonight. I just want to make an appeal to the government to address this very serious issue. I met with the Samaritans uh, in Toronto last Friday to discuss the issue, including uh, with their financial uh, advisor, uh, assist people in trouble. And some of the stories they told me were just horrific, Mr Speaker. We must act, and we, and we must act very quickly.